Hi, I'm Kim Rowe, the president of Robots. Welcome to the Robots video series, information and tutorials for current and prospective clients. In this video, I'll talk about why Linux and POSIX are absolutely the best choices for microcontroller or MCU development. There is some confusion about Linux and POSIX and how it is possible to utilize these de facto standards for embedded systems in microcontrollers. We'll examine that and we'll also address other concerns such as software reuse, time to market, intellectual property protection, team communication, and resource usage. First, let's take a look at the technical issues associated with an embedded operating system, like an ultra-tiny embedded Linux. This is the Unison nanokernel architecture. Unison is the 32-bit version of our ultra-tiny embedded Linux. It looks just like a microkernel architecture, but the Unison kernel is designed to scale down to a very tiny component. In fact, on some architectures, this kernel can run two threads in 1K of memory total, both instructions and data. While Unison is our 32-bit solution, DSP Nano is identical to Unison for 8 and 16-bit processors. They're both API compatible and applications port in seconds. I'll continue this discussion citing Unison as our ultra-tiny embedded Linux, but remember that everything that I say applies equally to DSP Nano for 8 and 16-bit MCUs. You can see the layered and modular architecture of Unison where all components require the kernel. Building on the kernel is a standard I.O. framework. On top of this, we add I.O. modules for various I.O. services. TCP, for example, and then add more libraries at the top. Each layer builds on the previous one and calls can be made up and down the hierarchy. The interface or API to this nano kernel is 100% POSIX and Linux compatible. What does Linux compatibility mean? For the Unison kernel, it means if there is a choice in POSIX, we will always choose the Linux compatible option so Linux applications can run without change. Over the Unison kernel, we have layered I.O. services, which are also 100% POSIX and Linux compatible. We provide I.O. drivers that run with this layer, as well as other libraries. Applications can call these APIs to get services and to manipulate data. Check our website for a complete list of our I.O. services. There are many technically important issues which must be balanced in the selection of an embedded operating system. I could go on at length, as this is a complex set of issues, but we'll return to this in future episodes. For now, there is one certainty. All solutions have the same fundamental constraints. While there may be significant differences in the number of components offered, or the features of the components offered, generally, all offerings do work at some level. You could literally make any real-time operating system or kernel work with enough time and effort invested. For example, any RTOS will support synchronization. Some may be faster, others slower, but there's no free lunch. What is given up in one area must be reclaimed somewhere else. Our decision was to err on the side of simplicity, robustness, and determinism. From a business profitability and effectiveness point of view, another set of issues makes a much larger difference. Let's call them product line issues. You might also refer to this as the total cost of ownership, or TCO. Unlike the technical issues, all of the product line issues are well understood and the best solutions are clear. We have known for many years that these approaches maximize profits and minimize time and effort. Isn't maximizing profit and minimizing time and effort exactly what you are looking for when you are selecting tools for developing a product or product lines? Isn't that exactly what you want? Time to market is critical. You sacrifice market share by delay. 
the small cost of embedded tools is irrelevant compared to market share. You can see in the graph that the first product to market targets the entire product lifecycle curve. By being late, you target only the market that remains at the point of entry. But your share of the market will follow the standard penetration curve. With product life cycles being 6 to 18 months for many products, you cannot afford to be late. Good engineers are often thinking about building it themselves for an extra 5% in functionality. Are you thinking that you can get a free or low cost kernel and integrate a collection of free I.O. libraries and it will be an effective solution for your company? If so, you need to understand time to market in more depth. To minimize time to market, you should buy everything that you can that is pre-integrated, tested and documented to minimize your time and risk. You can see from the area under the graph that the number of customers that you target by being on time is much larger. Basic economics will always show that it is substantially better to spend some money up front than lose market share. Open software standards support lean product development or platform-based product lines. Open standards foster team communication, provide ready access to reusable components, and easy access to knowledgeable people. Open software standards mean you are never locked in, ensuring you aren't at the mercy of a proprietary vendor. By using open software standards for your product or product line, you create flexibility. Now you can run on any operating system that supports the standards. You can run on any hardware that any of these operating systems run on. Your applications are now flexible enough to adapt to changing technology while minimizing time and risk. Any RTOS that does not offer native open standards is trying to lock you in, which will minimize your profits to their benefit. Open standards mean you are never locked in and you can maximize profits and minimize time and risk. Open standards are simply common sense. The flexibility to adapt to new product ideas and requirements is essential. Modularity, open systems, and open source accessibility are key in this area. Again, common sense. You might wonder why people haven't migrated to POSIX and Linux for MCU development before this. Until now, it hasn't been possible. Unison version 4 is the first solution that allows users to migrate their MCU products to POSIX and Linux standards. Unison version 4 gives you a powerful new tool to maximize profit, minimize time to market, and streamline development and communications. Unison is available today on a broad range of MCUs. You can have Unison running in only 10 minutes out of the box on standard evaluation platforms. Unison and DSP Nano development is free. The tools are free. Non-commercial deployment is free. Our ultra tiny Linux is GPL free, does not infringe any patents, and is entirely open source. Try it now at robots.com. We welcome your interest and your feedback. If you'd like to maximize your profits and minimize your time to market and risk, download Unison or DSP Nano now.